The Last of Us is considered one of the best games of its generation, probably the best game on the PlayStation 3, and The Last of Us Remaster could be considered one of the best games on the PS4. Well now, in 2022, we've got The Last of Us Part 1, a remaster slash remake, which brings the game up to graphical and technical standards of the PlayStation 5. But is it worth £70 or $70 to play The Last of Us on a current generation console? Well today, we're going to find out. The Last of Us is critically acclaimed, winning nearly every award under the sun, and was followed up in 2020 with a highly controversial Last of Us Part 2. Well, if you haven't played The Last of Us, then first of all, you should stop what you're doing right now and play it. You know, it's a post-apocalyptic stealth action-adventure game about trying to survive in a very, very harsh world. It's filled with danger around every turn, and Naughty Dog crafted an almost perfect single-player story which is definitely one of the best games of all time. The motivation for creating The Last of Us Part 1 is an interesting case. So the team had just finished working on The Last of Us Part 2, so wanted to dive into a new project, and The Last of Us also has a TV show coming out in 2023, so perhaps Naughty Dog wanted to tie it all together and provide a seamless player experience, given a whole swathe of new fans are about to enter The Last of Us universe via that HBO TV show. They've also got a multiplayer game in the works, which could be part of Sony's rumoured string of live service games coming out over the next few years, so it's a busy time for everyone over there at Naughty Dog. Well, The Last of Us Part 1 takes advantage of the PlayStation 5 being able to deliver highly detailed environments and character models in a fully rebuilt world full of new animations. The game also takes advantage of the new features of the PlayStation 5, like the haptic feedback on the controller, allowing for a more immersive experience. Plus, you've got some of the most extensive accessibility options I've seen in a video game. You know, the Last of Us Part 2 was praised for its approach to accessibility, and The Last of Us Part 1 goes even further, opening up the game to even more fans all around the world. The original multiplayer mode is missing from this updated PlayStation 5 version, but happily, it does include Left Behind, which is a short prequel. You know, while there are some differences in the game, it largely stays true to the original, meaning if you've never played The Last of Us, this is going to be the definitive way to experience the game. So playing through the game again, I'm reminded that The Last of Us is really a modern masterpiece of storytelling. The world is brutal, the characters, they're strong, the acting is fantastic, and it's shocking and violent, even more so when brought up to the standards of the PlayStation 5. Now, this one is definitely not for the faint of heart. It's sad, it's scary, it does get very dark at times. But there is a thread of hope in the story as Ellie and Joel go on their journey together through a clicker-infested near future. Well, The Last of Us Part 1 is billed as a ground-up rebuild for the PlayStation 5. Now, this is a remake and not a remaster as we had before. Now, there's two display modes with native 4K at 30 frames per second, and then another at Dynamic 4K, which targets 60 frames per second. And Naughty Dog say they've built the characters and environments from the ground up. And when it's delivered in this clarity, you can really, really tell the characters, the environments, and the action all definitely pop out of the screen. While the characters look better and more detailed, as seen by Sony side by side comparison videos and stills, you know, you've got the environments, they feel denser, and the interactive environments, they're more plentiful. The lighting is stunning and the reflections and the water effects are some of the best I've ever seen. You know, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was my top visual game in 2021, but I think Last of Us Part 1 could give that a run for its money. You know, it just looks that good. The rain effects, they are so realistic, with Joel and Ellie dripping wet through when they go through rain-soaked areas, with water running down their faces, their clothes and their weapons in a very realistic manner. It is the perfect advert for the PlayStation 5. There are definitely fidelity upgrades, which help you when you're crouching and crawling through a museum, trying to creep around clickers without being seen. The Last of Us Part 1 does lean on the original performance capture, cutscene direction, and the voice work from the original PS3 version, and there have been a few changes to characters as well, Tess being the most obvious near the start of the game, but also the improvements to the tech allow for more emotion to be conveyed through the expression of the characters. So with that in mind, it's not a 100% remake from the ground up, even though Naughty Dog is billing it as such. There are certainly a lot of noticeable improvements, but some of the audio assets and the direction have been retained. 
The accessibility options have been given a complete overhaul with a high contrast mode for players with vision challenges. There's also automatic navigation for blind and low vision players with indicators on the screen for deaf and hard of hearing players and loads more options too. The controller can be completely remapped and the difficulty options can be changed very, very seamlessly and easily. The difficulty also has a lot of subcategories like ally effectiveness and enemy awareness. It's not just a simple easy, medium and hard mode. Now, I can't really speak with any authority on the effectiveness of the accessibility options, but they do look good and they are more extensive than I've seen in other games. And hopefully other developers will be taking note and make these kinds of accessibility options standard across all games in the near future. Regarding some of the other improvements of The Last of Us Part 1, the enemy AI is in a major overhaul, and while it doesn't exactly match the level we see in The Last of Us Part 2, it is still a vast improvement over the first instalment. Enemies now walk in non-predictable patterns when they are trying to find you. More often than not, when it's a clicker or a soldier hunting you, enemies they are much more unpredictable when it comes to direction and methods of finding you, and that makes it much more of a challenge. Your AI-controlled friendlies also don't tend to walk out and wander out into the open and give the game away so easily in this version, which is a welcome addition. The DualSense haptic feedback has been expertly implemented on this one, so it's not the in-your-face rumbling of the controller that's most effective, it's the subtle, gentle feedback, which is almost constant throughout the whole playthrough. You can feel the kickback on your gun when the rain drops and the thundering hooves of horses as they run. And while the haptic feedback features do tend to drain the batteries very, very quickly on your controller, it does add an overall net positive feature to the immersive experience of The Last of Us Part 1. And I think it's a great example for others looking to implement similar features in other games. Yeah, from start to finish, The Last of Us Part 1 is about 15 to 20 hours long when you take into account that prequel left behind. And at the end, you can unlock some game modifiers, new cosmetics, and also visual modes too. The latter, you know, it's similar to Instagram filters that you're most likely familiar with. Plus, you can also dress up your main characters in different clothes if you really want to. The modifiers, they are fun to play around with. They include infinite ammo, infinite crafting materials, and slow motion, they are probably the most notable options. It does add a little bit of fun to the game if you want to go back in after the main story. Overall, this is the definitive way to experience The Last of Us Part 1. I'm not 100% sure we needed the experience, especially at the £70 or $70 price point, given we got The Last of Us Remaster available to play through PlayStation Plus. However, given the context of the TV show and The Last of Us Part 2, then it does kind of make sense. So I'm not sure I'd recommend playing through it if you've played it before, but if you haven't played The Last of Us, then now is the time to do so, and this is the version to play. Well, the game was developed by Naughty Dog. It was published by Sony. It's available on the PlayStation 5, and the original release date was the 2nd of September, 2022. Well, that is it for now for The Last of Us Part 1. Really, really enjoyed my playthrough, and it is an absolute delight going back to a modern classic video game. So as I said before, if you haven't played it, you should definitely experience The Last of Us, and this is the way to do it. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening. Hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. But if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the videos on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.